Alrighty, so this is the next installment of the TF History Series and today we're talking about the TF-536. Um, the flagship of my Amiga 500 range um, specifications are 68030 um, 64 megabytes of SD RAM, burst capable IDE interface, the CPU runs at 50 megahertz and that's it. It's really basic. So you get an IDE interface, you can load your WC load your games, you've got enough RAM for any kind of WC load game that you would ever need on an Amiga 500. Uh, you've got a good kick up the arse in terms of a CPU at 50 megahertz, and that's everything. Nothing else. Um, um, the idea behind this card was it was meant to be. Uh, the ask was from some of the builders was, could we take the TF330 and apply it to the Amiga 500? And let me just show you quickly how closely the designs resemble each other. So if I turn it that way. And I show you the TF330 and the TF536 side by side. You can see that the design is very similar. The major routing challenge was to take everything from this edge over here on the right of your screen uh, and, and route it over to the connectors on the left hand side here for the Amiga 500 connector. Um, yeah, the <laughs> and it worked really, really well. Um, uh, you know, they, they, it's just, just like the previous iterations of, uh, of this, the, the, you know, like the 330, um, it is a 50 megahertz fixed frequency CPU. This time, the previous versions of the A500 cards all let you pick your frequency. This is the, this is a crystal at 100 megahertz. It, um, it's clock divided again by the CP LD and it, the 68,030 runs at 50 megahertz fixed. You can you can you can mess around with that, but that's that's the supported frequency. Um, 64 megabytes of SD RAM supporting burst mode. I mean, that I had I remember having a conversation again. I say I remember having a conversation with Rob Cranley asking him how much. RAM was the maximum you'd ever need in an Amiga. I think we worked out thirty-two meg would be, the you know for for an A five hundred class machine for an ECS class machine, thirty-two meg would be the absolute max. So I doubled it and we got sixty-four. Um, yeah, the IDE interface, um, just just as we come to expect, works exactly the same. Uh, no FPU, um, and that's the big drop from the TF five three four. There's no FPU, and a lot of people. Don't like this card because there's no FPU, even though you don't get any benefit from having an FPU in an Amiga 500, in my opinion. Um, this is the Rev 1. There is a slight difference with the Rev 2. The Rev 2 um, has an optional IDE buffer on it. And this was my compromise to those who were really desperate to have an IDE buffer on in the Amiga 2000 and the Amiga 500. Um, what an IDE buffer does very shortly is all it does is it really gives you longer length on the cables. You can have more drives and you can have them at lo and you can have longer cables. Um, my compromise was that on this, for each of these chips, three chips, it uh, buffers eight connections. And underneath this card, there is a, a resistor network. It looks a bit like, looks a bit like that. Let's see if we can get that to focus. It looks like a bit like one of them. They are zero ohms, so basically they're, they're short circuit connections. Um, each of those resistor networks shorts four. So under each of these, there's um, two resistor networks. They short out. If you want an IDE buffer, you you populate three uh, seven four HC two four five chips on there, and you remove the zero ohm resistors, and you get an IDE buffer. That was my compromise. It was it was cheap and easy to do that that way. Um, it added no cost really to the overall cost of the board, but it gave people the option to put an IDE buffer on there if they wanted to add that, or if they wanted to, if a builder wanted to populate it with those chips. I didn't think most people would want it, but I gave them the option to do that. Um, I thought that was kind of a neat solution and a neat way of 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 doing all this. So this board was. 
It was a 2019 board. So it was a later board compared to my other boards. Um, I remember early versions of this board didn't work. I remember we had issues with it. I remember um, Alan Marks specifically having a lot of trouble with it. Other people didn't. And after a lot of back and forth here and there, we discovered that I'd actually, I don't know why, I'd, for some reason, I'd in, and it enabled Keeper as the termination mode for the firmware on this. And what termination, what these termination modes is, is what happens when a pin isn't driven high or low. Um, float means it will just float as is. Keeper means it will retain the last value. It'll latch that last value. And Keeper worked absolutely fine for me for some reason. I cannot tell you why, but it didn't work for Alan. Um, and after I changed it back to float and everything was pulled in the directions it needed to be, everything was back to normal and working fine. That also coincidentally turned out to be the reason, or at least part of the reason why the Xenocrisis um, Neo Geo card didn't work. And it was the uh, one of the suggestions I gave Gadget when he asked me what was going on. But so the roots of that solution were in this card. And I think that's pretty much everything. I'm trying to think of anything more interesting about this. Um, yeah, I think this card was, was I, I remember I, uh, this definitely was JLC PCB. It was pre done pre-assembly, so it was it was definitely uh, a sort of designed for pre-assembly board. Um, I was selling a lot of these on uh, through the Exos forum. I think I did sort of 200 of them. Um, and I was selling them in, in batches to all, all over the world. Um, I was going a bit crazy posting them. And I remember a lot of the ones I sent to Poland didn't get there. And controversially, I decided I wasn't going to, to ship to Poland anymore. And the Polish lads got quite angry with me, called me a racist, called me a lot of things. It wasn't anything to do with anything other than I didn't want to ship to somewhere where I had about a 30% chance of it arriving. And that, and that was, and honestly, that was it. Um, I know for a fact that, you know, it's not, uh, I know for a fact that companies in the UK won't ship to my parents in the Outer Hebrides because, you know, they, they won't ship there. <laughs> they, just, they just won't. They refuse because things won't go there or it's too expensive. Even though the Royal Mail costs, putting it in an envelope, posting it in Royal Mail is exactly the same cost to putting it anywhere in the UK. Some people refuse to ship it to the Outer Hebrides. I do not know why. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, so there was some controversy about this with the, with the Polish lads and it resulted in the, um, Exos selling the blanks because I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I, I never really want to deal with people and customers and that sort of thing. I wanted to fix things. So... Um, this particular board is running, up and running. Um, it's a fairly good kick in the pants. It's about 18 times the speed of an Amiga, fi as an Amiga 600, which is, you know, for, for what you were paying for this, it was pretty decent. Um, there's no, um, there's no FPU obviously because it says NA there. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's everything there is to say about this card. If you've got any memories about this card, if you've got anything that you can remember about it, about you building one, you shipping them or whatever, leave it in the comment down below. Um, I, um, if you like the video, give it a like, please. You know, if you think it's worthwhile. And if you've got any suggestions about the videos, please leave them in the comments below. Um, also, if you want to be kept up to date on the new videos, there's been one of these every day. I think we're coming the end of the the series soon but there's still a few more in the can so um if you want to be notified of the next uh, few videos uh, hit that subscribe button on the bell and you'll get notified about it i'm letting one i'm leaving letting them out at about eight o'clock in the morning every day if anybody else has got a suggestion of a better time i think it's a kind of a nice thing for people to watch on their way to work or just just before work it's a really short maximum 10 minute minute video on these so thank you for watching Take care and have a good one.